support and services to literacy and refugee programs across the state. I'm Marcia Conant, your host for today, and we're part of the Big Share Online Giving. All donors who give by 4 p.m. today will be included in a drawing for one of the five books we'll be sharing with you. A second opportunity to win a book will be open to any donors who make that donation by 7 p.m. today. Because we embrace the idea of reading for pleasure as well as for life, we are happy to offer these book suggestions chosen by members of the Wisconsin Literacy staff. So Dan, let's start with you. Thank you, Marcia. Um, I uh, recommended Isaac Asimov's Foundation. Um, it's a classic in science fiction literature, literature written in the 50s that spawned a series of sequels. Um, and it's about uh, what if a, a, a galactic empire was decaying and the only hope was to create an encyclopedia of all of mankind's um, knowledge um, so that we could prevent the fall of an empire. And it's uh, really um, timeless, even though it was really written in the 50s, it has a lot of uh, ideas about um, economics, sociology, and um, how we view ourselves as human beings. Um, it's written in a very similar style as other science fiction classics such as Dune. So if you're interested in the Dune series, you can um, pick up this book. And it's also got a series on Apple TV that I don't particularly recommend, but um, if you're more interested in uh, expanding your TV knowledge, you can also do uh, pick up the story that way. Um, and to talk more about a book that she recommends is Robin. Hi, everyone. I would like to share with you the book that I read called A Girl in His Shadow by Audrey Blake. So A Girl in His Shadow is a captivating historical fiction that weaves together the fascinating story of intrigue, mystery, history, and a poignant exploration of gender dynamics of the time. Taking place in the mid-19th century London, the story follows the early life of Nora Beattie, who is raised by the eccentric surgeon, Dr. Horace Croft, after Nora's family dies in a cholera pandemic. Nora lives an unconventional life as a young lady as she shadows her guardian and learns about the world of medicine and early surgery. In an era in which women are expected to follow certain norms, Norma becomes Dr. Croft's most trusted, albeit secret, surgical assistant. In order to protect Dr. Croft's practice and his reputation, she initially stays in his shadow. But when she makes an amazing discovery that could change the field of medicine forever, she must decide to re either remain invisible and let the men around her take credit for her work or let the world see her for who she really is, possibly destroying her own future and that of her adoptive father in the process. I couldn't get enough of this book, and so I was thrilled to learn about its sequel, The Daughter's, I'm sorry, The Surgeon's Daughter. So if you enjoy historical fiction and stories about women who challenge the gender roles of their time, you will be fascinated by A Girl in His Shadow. Erin, would you like to tell us about your book? Sure, thank you. Um, I am Erin Augustin. I am the Vaccine Project Manager for Wisconsin Literacy, and I wanted to recommend uh, the book Horse by Geraldine Brooks. This is an author, I've read several of her books, and one of my favorite books of hers is called People of the Book. Um, she's definitely in the historical fiction genre as well, and what she does really well is pull together these intricate stories that are usually tied together with this historical artifact. Um, and in this case, the historical artifact is a painting um, that a modern day art historian finds in a junk pile. Um, and this painting turns out to be of a famous racehorse named Lexington, um, who raced in the South um, in the pre-Civil War era. So as we get to learn more about what's inside this painting. It's one of the books where you kind of flash back and forth from 
past to present and weave multiple stories together to kind of paint um, a really complex picture of, of how this um, painting came to be, some of the history of modern race horsing. I'm not necessarily a horse lover, so I think you'll love this book even if <laughs> that's not the case for you. It's more of like a social exploration of that time and similar to Robin's book, it's, it's more of a story of a black groom who um, did a lot of the work behind the scenes to make this race horse the success that he was and some of like similar themes to what Robin was sharing with her book. Um, some of these um, hidden contributions and and how that affects um, not only that time frame, but um, a lot of the modern um, racial environment as well. So it, it, it kind of shows past and present and and what those linkages are. So. Um, I thought it was really, really good, really well done, and, and just kind of recommend her as an author overall if you like historical fiction. Um, Jamie, would you like to share your, your read with us? Sure. Thanks, Erin. Um, so the book that I am recommending is called Solito. It is a memoir. Um, so the author is Javier Zamora. And it's a memoir of, it tells the story of his migration from El Salvador to the United States at the age of nine. So the voice of the, the narrator is a nine-year-old. Um, it's a 3,000 mile journey for him. And he left behind his aunt and grandparents in El, El Salvador to reunite with his mother and father in the United States. Um, throughout the book, he's traveling alone, except for a group of strangers who kind of become his adopted family and a coyote hired to lead them to safety. His trip is supposed to last two short weeks, uh, but the epilogue at the end of the book kind of sums it up by saying for seven weeks from April 20th, 1999 to June 10th, 1999, no one knew where I was. And as a mother myself, like I can just imagine how um, how traumatic that was both for him as a nine year old, but also for his parents who were waiting for him to arrive. Um, one of the biggest reasons that I chose to read it is that I'm always looking to understand more about our country's immigration policies and the various immigrant experiences, um, especially since so many of the adults our member agencies serve are immigrants. So I totally recommend this. Ashley, I'll pass it off to you. What book do you recommend? Thanks, Jamie. I've just really been enjoying listening to all of uh, the reasons why you uh, you all chose the books you did. So um, the book I am recommending is uh, Walking with the Wind by John Lewis. It's uh, a really a stunning, uh, riveting, emotional, moving um, biography, autobiography and memoir um, by John who um, was uh, instrumental in the civil rights movement and also served in the House of Representatives uh, from 1987 until his death in 2020. And I knew a little bit about John, uh, but only a little. And um, this was a book selection uh, in the Rainbow Voices book club that I'm part of um, locally. And uh, it, his writing and his descriptions, of, uh, it begins with his childhood in Alabama with sharecropper parents. And um, pretty early on, John realized that he wanted to uh, get out of that area and uh, learn and grow and um, fight injustice. And so he leaves uh, um, his childhood home to study at college and uh, then becomes involved with um, the civil rights movement and voter rights and uh, um, meets is uh, part of the big six and the freedom writers and meets uh, and becomes close to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So it's it's really, um, uh, you know, the things that he experiences and that happened to him will anger you. Um, his journey to always look uh, on the positive side and look for hope and be that change will inspire you the writing and the descriptions will um, draw you in. And it's a long book, but it's a beautiful uh, and important story uh, to know. So I definitely encourage uh, everyone to, to uh, put that on their list. And now I will uh, give us back to Marcia to, uh, to wrap it up. Thank you, Ashley. Well, on behalf of all of us at Wisconsin Literacy, thank you for joining us for Literacy and Lunch a special part of today's Big Share Online Giving. 
to support our work during the Big Share. Thanks.